Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jerry Cooey. I'm Deborah Dawson. Thank you for joining us. And I think this, uh, Deborah, um, this, this, um, we'll just call this the "I Told You So" oh, uh, yeah. series. This yeah. is the "I Told You So" series. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to uh, a dear friend of mine. Uh, actually, I, I met her husband through him, but. Um, uh, I thought it was kind of neat. Uh, Jack McCombs of McCombs Electric uh, recently was elected to the Home Builders Hall of Fame, and I just want to give a big salute to Mr. McCombs. He is, I, f I forget what the numbers were, but it's, I think it's like 40 years that he's been wow. involved in electrical business in Santa Rosa County, and uh, he has certainly been a highlight of our county, and um, uh, Mr. McCombs, we appreciate uh, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm happy for you. Uh, folks, the reason this uh, episode is going to be called, and actually we'll be do a, doing a series, I Told You So. Um, you know, Deborah. Time and time again. Time and time and time and time and time and time again. Uh, Deborah started this, uh, Deborah and I started this venture. Um, I, I think we both, and, and hopefully you too, have become uh, disillusioned with the. Uh, some of the media coverage you know here's 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 my two cents worth folks i believe that the media including us uh, uh has an obligation to the citizens in their community to be the watchdog for uh, for a uh, ever-growing powerful government that is that is taking things away from the citizens and uh, you and know, let me just slip in. There, a lot of what they're taking, they're giving to their friends on the private side. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's not like they're growing government completely out of this. Um, it. It's going off under the table. Right. The uh, the uh, the thing that concerns me, and 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 here's what Deborah and I try to do. And and uh, folks, uh, go 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 to our webpage on on YouTube, and look back at the stories of some of the things that we're going to talk about to, uh, on this show and the next show and probably in future shows. Um, uh, one, of, one of the items that was subpoenaed by the, by the uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, was uh, documents concerning the private prison in Santa Rosa County. Yeah. We're going to go through the subpoenas. We're going to talk about what the FBI is looking at. And the reason the I told you so element is in there is because a vast number of these items we've we, covered we and we've been the only ones to cover this stuff right and there it, it's like a roundup of our past shows these, exactly. these subpoena items it, it's amazing and, yeah. and and what what really kills me is you look at the news um articles recently now with these fbi um investigations and it's it, it's quite clear that these news agencies, local news agencies have known about this as well Oh, of they know all this stuff. They've got all the background information. They have not said a word until right. the FBI showed up. Right. Well, and, and, and on the prison issue, folks, Deborah and I, go to our YouTube site and look. The first show that we ever did at Santa Rosa Week TV was the private prison coming to Santa Rosa County. Um, uh, we have done numerous shows uh, regarding uh, Team Santa Rosa activities, uh, 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 government grants that have come through. We certainly questioned um, uh, the military affairs position over and over and over, folks. We've been here for you, and uh, I, you know, look, I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, for us to pat each other on the back because the the things that that um, uh, the other media won't cover. You know, look, folks, it's really cool to have a headline that the FBI subpoenas Santa Rosa County. You know what I believe, and, and Deborah believes the same thing, if the media will do its job, it will never escalate to the FBI issuing subpoenas in our community and embarrassing the reputation of our community. Uh, it is my belief that as a, as a group, the media, when they are when tips are referred to them about questionable activities such as the private prison, when tips are given to them about military affairs position, and all of these other things which Deborah just mentioned, they had been tipped about. I don't, I don't want us to wait until we have a huge ugly situation in our county. Uh, I, you know, the, the and, and what irritates me, Jerry, was when they were given those tips, was the attitude 
that the tips were met with was right. you know it, well well you who know are you to be concerned about right. you know this is ridiculous this is not worth nobody wants to know about this kind of thing well you know look all all along and uh and and I've waited for a long time to say this, so I'm going to say it. Every single thing that I have raised questions about, that Deborah has raised questions about, all of this time where I have been slaughtered in the press, where I have been assaulted in my personal life, where I have had attacks on my character, interestingly enough, the FBI has taken an interest in all of those things. So certainly we're going to have to wait and see how it all plays out. But I don't know about you folks, but I've read quite a few stories about the FBI, and they usually get their man or woman. Yeah, what do we say? They're the special forces of law enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, so what we're, what we're going to do, um, in, um, in, in case you haven't seen this, Here's one of the subpoenas. And it's quite long. It's quite long. Uh, should you wish to see those subpoenas or print a copy of those subpoenas, you will find them on uh, SantaRosaSpeaks.com, www.SantaRosaSpeaks.com. You'll see a thread there about the federal subpoenas. It's very easy. You don't have to be a member to go look at them. You don't have to be a member to print them. Open it up. Hit the print button. There's there's actually four of them. We're gonna uh, there was some similarities uh, between the four, so we're gonna basically cover uh, two of them. But uh, you can have a copy for yourself and uh, and uh, see. Uh, you know, we, Deborah and I we laugh a lot about um, our tax dollars at work. Well, let me just say that I'm very proud to see some of my tax dollars at work now uh, because I have believed and continue to believe that uh, across our region there are many many things that need to be looked at I'm not saying that anybody's done anything wrong I'm just saying a independent organization who doesn't have brother-in-laws working there needs to take a look at this stuff so which means it's not going to be a local organization that, that unfortunately that is that is correct so we, we will uh, we will start out Deborah and I are gonna alternate what's uh, what's in the subpoena and, and we may have a little yeah we'll talk comment so go ahead there what's number okay. one the first one is um and this is um you are commanded to bring with you the following documents uh or objects they're asking team santa rosa for right. their background records a, 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 and, and look, let's just a second team santa rosa is remanded to appear before a federal grand jury on september the 27th uh, now, I would be assuming in saying this, but a representative, and it specifically says custodian of records, so Cindy Anderson uh, will probably be the one that has to appear or at least gather this information yeah. together. And this batch is just what they want from Team Santa Rosa. Right. Okay. Number one, lifeguard ambulance and or the Santa Rosa County lifeguard ambulance contract, discussions, negotiations, grant assistance, and or any other financial assistance. Right. As, as you all know, uh, uh, we, we changed ambulance companies uh, about a year and a half ago. And for, for whatever reason, this is in the subpoena. So. And there was a study that was performed. And there was a consulting study yes. that was done. So, okay, uh, item number two, and, and I, I'm going to trim this down a little bit. I'm not going to read every word, but, but basically uh, they have an interest in discussions, negotiations, proposals, everything uh, included um, with any properties in Santa Rosa County owned by William Bill Pullum, Bart Pullum, Garrett Walton, William McKelvey, and or Charles Clary, uh, Charles Clary, former state senator, including but not limited to uh, entities and when they say entities there's uh, folks have limited liability uh, corporations LLC's and that nature and those names would be Vix of Navarre, Navarre 33, Top Shelf Investors, Navarre Crossing, The Boardwalk at Navarre, Crescent Shores, Pullum Commerce Park, Biscayne Properties, Navarre Beach Ventures, RV Resorts, our Town Properties, 
Yellow River Ranch, Ganaja Properties, and Navarre Ventures LLC. And that second to the last one, I think, is, I'm not sure, but I think it's located in Honduras. Right. I w would imagine that would be near the private island. So That Bill Pullum owns. Yes. So, um, okay. And, and of course, they, they're they also, it, with, within that, they have asked uh, for complete descriptions of the 45 one-acre lots in the Pullum Commerce Park, the 92 acres that you and I bought in the Commerce Park that was appraised at 900000 but we paid $3.2 million for. Apparently, they have an interest uh, in that. So and we should mention that's the same Garrett Walton mentioned here, who is, uh, is he now not president of Rebuild Northwest He's the Florida? chairman of Rebuild Northwest Florida. I believe, his, poor people I believe his salary exceeds $90,000 a year to be the chairman of uh, Rebuild Northwest Florida. Yes. So, yes, that would be the, the one. Okay, item number okay. three. Number three, uh, discussions between Team Santa Rosa um, it, with any Santa Rosa County Commissioner outside regularly scheduled and public commissioner board meetings. And that's going to be a lot because remember they were operating outside of the sunshine for so long. About 10 years worth yeah. of conversations. That's a lot that of occurred. conversations. Yeah. That's a lot right. of conversations. Regarding the consideration, purchase, rezoning, and or financing of any real property owned by, again, Mr. Bill Pullum. Garrett Walton, William McKelvey, or Charles Clary's properties by or on behalf of Santa Rosa County from January 01 to the present, right. which and would include the Pullum Park. Right, and Deborah makes a very good point, folks, in which we've we've discussed on this show. It was, you know, uh, an effort by citizens who went through the state attorney's office. Uh, uh, there's to force them to some, operate in the sunshine. Right, so, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 10 years worth of board meetings and executive board meetings that occurred at Team Santa Rosa that were held behind closed doors. So that might be a very lengthy list of things for Team Santa Rosa yeah. to gather up on. I hope they don't leave anything out <laughs> that the FBI would later find out about. Uh, item, item number four, beginning and ending dates of Mona Braxton Armadeo and Bill Pullum's involvement with or on behalf of Team Santa Rosa. Specify the nature and extent of involvement of each and all positions held by Pullum and Braxton Armadeo and inclusive dates of service. And um, Mona Braxton was the former vice chair at team. Right. Um, A board member. Yes. The um, records that they gave us indicate that she stepped down and shortly thereafter, if I remember correctly, um, she was awarded a $170,000 Defense Department grant contract. Correct. Right. That, right. if I remember correctly, she had some hand in obtaining to begin with. Right. The, uh, the whole issue there, folks, was uh, Santa Rosa County received a grant. Now, interestingly enough, the grant did not say you had to spend all $170,000. It just said, we're issuing you a grant of up to and the, X dollars. And the idea of the grant was to help mil military communities um, expand out into other forms of industry besides right. the military. It was a diversification yes. grant, basically. Yes. And um, If I remember correctly, what her company finally, um, the final product was a little orange sign that you would put in your window. Right. That so, said something to the effect of Santa Rosa County business redefined here, something right. like that. I don't remember exactly, so I can't say for right. sure that's what it said. Okay, <laughs> item number five, Deborah. Uh, annual listings of all team, staff, board, officer, and committee members to include Bill Pullum, specify that, from 2000 until present, and listing of Santa Rosa County Commissioners assigned to Team Santa Rosa each year from 2000 to present. Well, that's going to be a short list. Provide documentation indicating, again, Bill Pullum's and or any Pullum Corporation's level, type, and length of membership with Team Santa Rosa, role, and involvement with the Team Building and Sites Committee and or Land and Park Acquisition Committee, and any all other involvement or influence right. since it's in set, since team's inception. And um, uh, of course, in in our in, uh, in our investigation, we determined when when we were going through all the uh, the emails from Team Santa Rosa, we learned that Bill Pullum was uh, elected as the land acquisition chairman of Team Santa Rosa, and shortly thereafter, the Pullum Commerce Park was born. So. Um, obviously, I mean, I've seen those. Uh, that was just in our uh, yes. rudimentary search when we were when we were just looking at emails yes. to, 
to see what was there. Yeah. That, that information was readily available. Now, it's not clear if he was on that committee when they actually made the perch. I don't believe he was on the committee right. then. He, had, he was off it by then. Well, that's... But prior to that Pullum Park becoming a, a project, right. he, was, he was put on that the Sites Acquisition Committee. Yeah, that is correct. That would be the committee that identified sites that... That they wanted the, county should the buy. taxpayers to pay for. Correct. Right. That is correct. All right, item number six, Team Santa Rosa Board and our staff members who travel to Honduras uh, and our Clarks K and Ganaja, Honduras, with or at the request of Bill or Bart Pullum, provide information on travelers' involvement with the Honduran government and any transacted business with or on behalf of Bill Pullum, Team Santa Rosa, any United States company, corporation, and or Santa Rosa County. Now... Um, and, and actually, I, I haven't discussed it on the show, but I, but I, but I can now. Um, the Ethics Commission did find Gordon Gooden probable cause because he did not fill out his gift form as required by state law when he made a trip to Pullum's Island. Of course, they uh, turned a blind eye to any other reasons for going there, but that's okay. But, but, um, well, let me mention something else real fast on that. We do know that Bill Pullum was um, at one point developing housing down in right. Honduras. He, there was a resort. It looked like a resort that he was. And that was on his website. Right. Um, I understand. This is unverified. This is from another source. I understand that um, an American electricity company was providing electricity down there. Well, that some, lines. So, so, somebody had to put electricity yeah, there. Somehow the electricity. Right. made it out to some of the, and we don't know if it got to his resort or whether it was going to some of the poor people out there but we know that somehow there was an american electricity company that was for some reason down there spending the money that people pay um for their very high electricity bill rates right. to um to to do some work down in honduras this is what i'm told from a source unverified maybe the fbi will find out more on that okay item number seven seven team santa rosa board and or staff members Personal or business travel for meetings, conferences to Washington, D.C. For, um, for or on behalf of Santa Rosa County since 2002. They want the dates, the people who accompanied them, the individuals present from the county, elected officials present, the nature of business conducted to include meetings, conferences, business meals, fundraisers, etc. Right. And I guess that certainly makes sense. Item number eight. Any Team Santa Rosa board member or staff member's person personal or business travel provided by Bill or Bart Pullum via aircraft, private or commercial, or vehicle. And um, um, according to their, it, their website, indicates they own at least one airplane and right. a, possibly a helicopter. Right. Okay. Uh, number nine, the military affairs consultant position for Team Santa Rosa to include job posting, application procedures and selection process since 2005. And we reported on this and nobody else did. Absolutely. We, we were the only organization and, and we reported on it from, from a sense of fairness. Okay, we're, we're looking for a military affairs person. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm... I, this is another team I, job. I, I, won't, I won't be, you know, I'll stay neutral on whether or not we needed one, but they decided they needed one. My problem with this, totally, is that and and folks we, we we even have an email that shows where Cindy Anderson executive director of Team San Rosa said well we're gonna hide that job posting so only certain people will be able to find it well so they won't get a lot of applications was right. why they wanted to do that and and um, I, I mean we've seen that with our own eyes we we raised a lot of concern over that we we covered it in the show um, and I'll uh, mention Pete Gandy who got the job was the only employee that I'm aware of ever from Team Santa Rosa who actually manned up and came on our show right. and answered the questions that we put to him. And, 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 you know. and he did. We, uh, actually, folks, uh, we, we, gr we granted Pete Gandy not one 30-minute segment, but two 30-minute segments. It's up on the website. And, uh, you know, I, I, felt it, I felt it was only fair. Uh, I, uh, uh, certainly, I, I don't have an issue with Mr. Gandy. It was all about the process and the procedure on, on how it was done. And, and look, we, we beat it to death, not only on this show, but I personally beat it to death at county commission meetings. You know, how can this, you know, it, it just wasn't handled correctly. If you want to have an open job 
and uh, you want to get the best candidate, it just seems to me that you should open it up to the widest audience yeah. possible. And they apparently had several military, ex-military people recently out of the military apply. Right. And I understand one of them at least was a little perturbed. Right. That he had an interview and it sounded positive and then it sounded that he didn't hear anything else. So. Right. Uh, item number 10 was the planned movement of home place furniture into the Santa Rosa County Industrial Park and the planned movement of home place furniture from the Santa Rosa Industrial Park to the Pullum Commerce Park. Now, what and 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 this was an item that uh, that that we had discussed very openly. Um, uh, home place furniture, quote unquote, another one of the many press releases that have been put out that we have a bunch of jobs coming to Santa Rosa County. They were supposed to go into the to the Santa Rosa County Industrial Park and. Uh, Cindy Anderson herself, I was there when she said it, she said, well, the, the reason they're moving to the Pullum Commerce Park is because they don't meet the average wage that, that we've set a goal for in the industrial park, so they have to go some other place. And uh, just for the record, that was uh, uh, some two years ago, two and a half years ago, the property in Pullum Commerce Park still has uh, no building, no activity on it. So We went out there with a the camera and photographed we the weeds several times. We sure did. Okay, number 11, Deborah. Number 11, any all team involvement, business, or employment with Mike Rogers, property appraiser, and Team Santa Rosa recommendation for Rogers, again an appraiser, as to be the third appraiser for Pullum's 90 acres, and then they say the parcel, parcel number. number. Yeah. yeah, the... Uh, and, and, and to, folks, we've talked about this repeatedly on this show. Uh, there was three appraisals done. This is the Pullum Park. We the, for, 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 the, for the Pullum Park, the uh, Brantley appraisal for 900000 and there was one that was a little over $3 million, and then there was one that came in at $3.4 million. We have discussed it at nauseum yes, on, this, on this TV yes, show. Yes, along with everybody who's at McDonald's drinking coffee in the morning, uh, at uh, Waffle House drinking yes. coffee, and every other place in Santa Rosa, at the barber shop. It's going around. Everybody knows about that. So. And um, what happened was they actually basically dropped the $900,000 appraisal entirely. That is and, correct. And we ended up, of course, paying $3.2 million right. for that property. Okay, uh, item item number 12, uh, Deborah actually jumped the gun a little bit and already discussed that one. That was the $170,000 Department of Defense uh, diversification grant that went to the ID group. We, we've already discussed that. Uh, you know, folks, I'll add to you that during that time I was assaulted on Channel 3 News by Commissioner Salter over that. Uh, there were a few other things that somewhere in the future I'll share with you that was done to me, but but we'll hold that for now. Well, I think what intrigues me about this is the FBI would like for them to provide ID Group's completed pro product in its entirety. Right. When, when, and uh, along with how they bid it out. Right. When uh, Alan and I went to Team Santa Rosa in order to get the finished product, Ms. Anderson furnished me with four sheets of paper. And, and, and let me explain to you why there's four sheets of paper. Uh, that grant was supposed to be reported back to the federal government in four reports from start to finish and she only made us copies of the cover page and and what Alan and I found humorous about it is you could see the staple in the <laughs> you could see the staple that was in the copy of what was handed to us so obviously any seventh grader would have known that there were additional <laughs> papers involved in that and we actually had to uh, um, uh, actually Alan called uh, uh, called the Secretary of Navy uh, there's one department that oversees that and he requested a copy of, of all that and got it it still was a very thin report yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so well, maybe uh, they're very succinct well we shall see uh, item number 13, all federal grant proposals awarded to or on behalf of Team Santa Rosa and all federal grant requests for pr proposals received by or submitted Team Santa Rosa to include bidding and selection processes since 2002. 
This includes, but is not limited to, Department of Defense, Department of Agriculture, Department of Commerce, Department of Transportation grants. This is, a, a lot of this is the money they use to buy the properties around Whitingfield. Right. That's several selected people mysteriously decided to buy land around Whitingfield in recent years and then turned around and the government bought right. the land from them. Right. So, um, um, which is fine if that's, you know, you want to take that risk and if there, if, right. as long as everything's above board, hey, it's no uh, problem. All, all I say is take a look at it. Yeah, exactly. An independent organization, take a look at it. That's all I've ever asked for. Exactly. So far, I haven't gotten an independent yeah. organization. Item number 14. Nature of involvement by team and or its members and or staff with the Workforce Innovation in Regional Economic Development or WIRED grant. Right. Um, that one is, uh, uh, to, to, to what I know of that, apparently that was a grant that has come somewhere in, in the area here and, and uh, so they're apparently expressing curiosity in that. And item number 15, list of all team, private, individual, and business, donors, and the amounts donated from 2000, that's going to be a short list, 2000 to the present. <laughs> they won't have trouble scaring that up. Right. So, um, you know, this, this gives you uh, an idea. I knew this one was going to take pretty much of a whole show. Once, once again, if you, if you have any doubt, I'm reading off an official document. Yeah. There it is, folks. And uh, there's, I count one item on that list that we've not reported on. Really? And well, that was the wire grant. That's the only thing we've never reported on. Well, we did pretty good. Yeah, then. we did all right. We, 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 we covered most of that. Um, like, you know, look, folks, like I said in the beginning, um, all I have ever wanted, I, I'm not saying that I'm right or wrong on, on, on any uh, uh, things that we've covered on this show. All I've ever wanted was a, a truly independent review of how this stuff gets handled. And, um, uh, you know, certainly the FBI's reputation precedes itself. I think it's going to be an illuminating uh, review. Uh, they don't, um, you know, they, they don't, uh, you, you know, as I read stories about Atlanta, Georgia, and Chicago, Illinois, and mm -hmm. New York, uh, they're no respecter of persons. Right. If you violated federal law, right, and they can make a case against you, right, they will, well, they will do that. And let me just reiterate, and the saddest thing about this is it, it takes the FBI to do the job of the local media. This right. is just the saddest thing about this. Could have, could have been handled a long time ago, yeah. so... Uh, this is part one of I Told You So. I'm Jerry Cooey. I'm Deborah Nelson. Thanks for watching. Good night.